the winners. Tragedy in Florida. We are hearing from witnesses of a shooting that killed at least 50 people and injured even more at a nightclub. Officers in Orlando say they did not wait to negotiate with the shooter. You don't have the benefit of seeing everything that's going on. We're talking to a former Lexington detective about the police response in Florida. And Lexington joins the list of communities across the nation mourning the victims. We'll let you know where to go to remember those killed. This is WKYT News. We will not be defined by a hateful shooter. We'll be defined how we support and love each other. The deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. At least 50 are dead and more injured in a shooting at a nightclub in Orlando, Florida. You're watching WKYT. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Orlando police are just now starting to release the names of the victims. And emergency responders are working to reunite the wounded with their families. CBS's Craig Boswell is talking to people still looking for their loved ones in our top story. Oh my God. Shots rang out after police arrived at a gay nightclub in Orlando. Investigators say Omar Mateen entered the crowded Pulse Club around 2 a.m. Sunday with an AR-15 assault rifle and started firing. Christopher Hansen was partying with friends. Just hearing the bang, 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 thought it was part of a song. And then when you turn around, the person next to you is like screaming, there's blood splattering, and I didn't know if it was mine or somebody else's. People ran for the exits. Some of the injured had to be taken to the hospital in pickup trucks because there weren't enough ambulances. Friends and family came to the scene looking for loved ones. But I don't know where my son is. No one can tell me where my son is. If he's been shot, if he's dead, no one knows. Most people got out, but the gunman managed to take hostages. Mina Justice talked to her son on the phone while he was trapped in a bathroom. He sound bad. Just afraid he's going to die. Three hours after the shooting started, a SWAT team decided to enter the club. Witnesses living just yards from the club describe a large armored vehicle ramming the back of the club and then a long volley of gunfire. We heard probably about 60 or 70 rounds. David Ward was able to capture the shooting on his cell phone. The SWAT team killed Mateen, a 29-year-old U.S. citizen from Florida who worked as a security guard. He purchased the weapons legally and had been on the FBI's radar. Sources tell CBS News before the shooting, Mateen called 911 and pledged allegiance to ISIS. The president says the shooting is being investigated as an act of terrorism. I've directed that we must spare no effort to determine what, if any, inspiration or association this killer may have had with terrorist groups. ISIS is claiming responsibility for the brutal attack, calling Mateen an Islamic State fighter. Also during the president's speech, he ordered flags be flown at half staff at the White House and federal buildings until sunset Thursday. He's directing the same observance at embassies and U.S. government facilities abroad. Groups across the country are holding vigils tonight to remember the victims of the shooting. Lexington Fairness is hosting one at 8 at Triangle Park. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner is there now. She's talking to a former investigator about the way in which police are handling this very difficult case. She continues our top story team coverage. Just a couple of hours from now, Triangle Park will be filled with people remembering more than 50 lives lost in the Orlando shooting. We sat down with WKYT's officer Don here at the park to talk about police response. When you're there, you don't have the benefit of seeing everything that's going on. Don Evans, a former officer himself, says it's easy to be an armchair quarterback and to analyze how police handled an active shooter situation at Pulse nightclub in Orlando. But he says it's truly a terrifying reality and it's hard to say what you do unless you lived it. Orlando police entered the nightclub and killed Omar Mateen. Evan says mentality has changed over time and police are actually trained not to negotiate. You got chaos. You have two or three hundred people that could be involved here. You have to find the person who's doing the shooting and hope that you don't create a friendly fire situation where you hurt people that you're trying to protect. But that's more and more what first responders are facing. They have to make split decision, split second decisions because sometimes waiting can be to make things even worse. Lexington Fairness is getting the community together and hosting tonight's vigil. 
in Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Just hours after the shooting, hundreds of people across the country started lining up at blood donation centers. Kentucky Blood Center announced this afternoon they are partnering with blood centers in Orlando, collecting blood for victims still in the hospital. We're told donors have already supplied all initial blood needs, but leaders at the Orlando Center say there will be more needed. And we will continue to track this story on the air and online tonight. CBS will have the latest on the shooting coming up on 60 Minutes at 7. Scott Pelley will be reporting from Orlando. Coming up at 8 on WKYT, the 2016 Tony Awards. This year's show will be dedicated to those affected by the shooting in Orlando. The cast of Hamilton decided not to use muskets in its Tony Awards performance tonight. Singers will instead pantomime their shots during the performance of Yorktown. The song recreates the Battle of Yorktown. And remember to get the latest information on the shooting and national reaction. Head over to our website, WKYT.com, and check out the WKYT News app. You can download it for free in the app or Google Play stores. Back here in Kentucky, Louisville police are looking for a man they say shot one of their officers. We're told Officer Kyle Carroll is in stable condition after someone shot him in the chest. Police say last night, Officer Carroll was chasing 22-year-old Joaquin Crowley near 23rd and Magazine Street. They spent hours searching for Crowley last night and today. Louisville's police chief says his department is doing their best to support Officer Carroll and his family. And when this kind of things happen, uh, officers typically will come to the hospital to, to lend not only moral support, but to do anything they might be able to do to uh, assist that officer, assist his family. Uh, we have a, a peer support unit uh, that, that is here that is made up of our officers. And, and they are uh, uh, providing support for him as well. Crowley is considered armed and dangerous. He is 5 foot 11 and weighs about 135 pounds. This has been a deadly weekend on Interstate 75. The latest wreck, a three car crash near mile marker 102, killed one man. Police say 60 year old Robert Wainscott Jr. died in the wreck around 10 30 last night. WKYT's Mike Byers tracking the investigation. One person is dead after a serious crash involving multiple cars happens on I-75, forcing this stretch of road to be shut down for miles. Lexington police say the accident happened around 1030 last night at the 102 mile marker. The northbound lanes were shut down for nearly five hours, causing traffic to be backed up for miles. Police say three vehicles were involved, including a pickup truck. The Fayette County coroner tells us the driver of the pickup, 60-year-old Robert Wainscott Jr. of London, died at the scene. Another person was taken to UK hospital with minor injuries. Now this is the second deadly crash in as many days on I-75. On Friday, a woman was killed after she lost control of her motorcycle. In Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. The Lexington Police Crash Reconstruction Unit has completed its investigation, but has not yet said what caused the crash. The Harrison County Coroner says a man is dead tonight after jumping from a dam. Investigators say 57-year-old Stephen Bell went missing last night near the Robinson Dam. Crews found his body this afternoon. Officer Don flew over the scene in sky first. You can see several searchers in his video lined up along the dam looking for Bell. WKYT's Mike Linden talked to crews who say that area is very dangerous. Harrison County search and rescue officials say around 7.30 Saturday night, a man went missing while swimming in the Licking River. They say 57-year-old Stephen Bell of Harrison County was swimming with two friends near the Robinson Dam. He jumped off the dam and was going to go swimming. And then, uh, according to them, he swam across the river, and that was the last they saw of him. After searching for several hours late Saturday night, crews picked up the search early Sunday morning. The Harrison County coroner was called out to the river Sunday afternoon. Kraft says while this may seem like a good place to come and cool off during the hot summer months, she says her and the Harrison County rescue crews are constantly coming out to this same spot year after year to search for missing swimmers. In Harrison County, Mike Linden, WKYT. Bell's family told us he was an experienced swimmer. Investigators told us there was no indication he was under the influence of any alcohol or drugs when he jumped. Still to come on WKYT, firefighters across Kentucky are showing off their skills this weekend. 
And we are tracking some showers, thunderstorms, and a whole lot of heat out there, at least for this evening. We will break it all down. Coming up. It's a connection to YT. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. It has been a little stormy for a few of us. Others are still dealing with all of that heat and humidity. And speaking of that, you can see some of the steam here in Lexington on our sky cam. Now, we had a shower pass through a little while ago as well, but it's certainly nasty looking out there as we're gazing back toward the uh, downtown area uh, along uh, Winchester Road there. Currently 85 degrees in Lexington with a feels like temperature of 88. Now, a little while ago, we were in the low 90s, but with that shower passing through and some of the cloud cover coming in, knocked our temperature down just a few degrees. Now, as we look at the other locations, the core of the heat still strong to our west. 90s showing up out there, but more mid and upper 80s with some 70s also filtering in as well. So we're all over the place across parts of central and eastern Kentucky as that frontal boundary and those showers and storms are dropping in. Over the next few days, as far as temperatures and all the mugginess in the air are concerned, we are going to be decent tomorrow. It's going to be fantastic, really. But then Tuesday gets here and it starts to get a little more oppressive. And then by Wednesday, we're talking about tropical levels with the moisture. Very uncomfortable stuff. Here's the hour by hour run with our temperatures. It gets downright comfortable, almost cool in some areas tonight. But there's going to be a tale of two states, temperatures, as far as temperatures are concerned, the next few days. Here's most of us, our entire area. We're going to be great. Low 80s, mid 80s out there. Some 70s are trying to show up in eastern Kentucky. But the heat's not far away. And the heat will be making a return as we get into Tuesday. We're right back into the upper 80s out there. Throw in the humidity, it starts to feel uncomfortable again. Bumps up the temperatures, or what it feels like at least, by a couple of degrees. We'll track some rain back into town at that point as well. We're tracking a little bit out there now. It's a broken line of showers and a few thunder showers. Southern sections of McGoffin County getting in on one of those, and then a little activity along the Mountain Parkway around Stanton. Some showers, some heavier areas of rain because that front is pressing in, igniting all of those chances. That front will continue to work its way through the area as we head through the rest of the evening and overnight, and you watch the rain will disappear as well. With that front coming in from the northeast like that, what it'll do is it'll bring in that drier air, and rain chances are going to be cut off for us as well. Most of the action will be well off to our west, and this will be the core of all of it. Showers, thunderstorms continue to develop in western Kentucky, along with the heat and humidity. At least until Tuesday. That's when it gets a little more action packed around here for us. So that's the setup for us. It's a back and forth. Temps and humidity down on Monday, but in Tuesday, when Tuesday gets here, it all comes rolling back in here. And that is when we're talking about upper 80s, maybe some low 90s again in a few areas. Seven day forecast, the rest of it. I'll call tomorrow slightly cooler and downright comfortable because the humidity is going to be down. But it doesn't last, at least until the weekend. That's when things will change again for us. So it's a back and forth all the way through this seven day. You got a lot of storm chances on there. Daily storm threat out there, maybe some heavier totals thrown in too. Thank you, Jim. Okay. The heat didn't stop the Lexington Fire Department from competing in the Firefighter Combat Challenge. Every year they host the event for firefighters across the region. Organizers say the challenge encourages and supports firefighter fitness. It also simulates the real life physical demands of the job. As part of the challenge, firefighters have to climb a five-story tower and carry a life-sized 175-pound training dummy. All these activities that we're doing out here are things that we do on the job every day. Hose pulls, uh, sledgehammers, I mean, they're things that we do on the job. So it's really not getting us ready for the job, but the job gets us ready for this is the best way to think of it. And you're doing it in gear, which is even harder. The World Challenge will be in Montgomery, Alabama in October. Lee Kay's in next with sports where a former Wildcat is working out for the pros. Yeah, what is Scal with this year's potential at the next level? He's getting good feedback from the NBA team so far. And a former Wildcat wins a championship. We catch up with Darius Miller next in sports. Jeep Ram today. The NBA draft is just less than two weeks away, and by all indications, Scala this year is impressed during the pre-draft workouts for NBA teams. Scal has put on some weight. He told reporters this week that his ideal weight for his rookie season would be about 225 pounds. He will work out with the Timberwolves and the Celtics this week. Both teams have top five picks. This past week, Scal worked out for the Suns and the Lakers. He says the feedback has been good so far. 
Uh, great feedback. Uh, you know, I've been doing really well in the workouts. Like I said before, I just treat them as a you know regular workout. Uh, you know, my very first workout, I was a little nervous at the beginning, but uh, once I got in the flow of things, everything went went away. So. If there's one thing Darius Miller knows how to do, it's win. The former Mason County star and Kentucky Wildcat won another championship on Sunday. Miller and his Bros Baskets Bamberg team won the Beko BBL championship in Germany for a second year in a row. Miller had 19 points and six rebounds in the title game. He was named the finals MVP. He can add that title to his state championship at Mason County in 2008 and a college national championship at UK in 2012. Golden State's Draymond Green has been suspended for game five of the NBA Finals after the league assessed a flagrant one foul from his scuffle with LeBron James on Friday. The NBA announced the retroactive decision today. The Warriors led the, lead the series 3-1 to one with a chance to clinch their second straight championship at home on Monday night. On Saturday, Kentucky's Jasmine Camacho Quinn became the first freshman in history to win the 100-meter hurdles at the NCAA Outdoor Track and Field Championships. Quinn's time of 12.54 seconds was the fifth best time in NCAA championship history. The UK women would finish 11th overall as a team, but Camacho Quinn said she didn't even know the significance of winning that race as a freshman. It's great. It really is great. I honestly didn't know I was the first freshman to win, but that's great news to hear too. But it was very a great feeling. Very excited. She can be a mega star um, in track and field. I mean, that that ain't many freshmen out there in the four by one, the hundred hurdles. And coming back in the 200, um, she can do so much better than that. And I'm just proud of her. I'm just proud of the effort she put out. Camacho Quinn has already been named to the Puerto Rican national team for the upcoming Rio Olympics. Reds wearing the camo uniforms on Sunday, and their offense was nowhere to be found. Aside from Ramon Cabrera's double to deep left field in the second inning here, Steve Selsky would score to get the Reds on the board. Down four to one to the A's. The Reds would load the bases in the fourth with two outs. Zach Cozart grounds out to end the inning. That was as close as they would get. Still four to one A's. Top of the eighth. Danny Valencia adds some insurance for Oakland. That's a solo shot to left. Reds take the series, but they are denied the sweep, losing six to one. Louisville baseball needed just one win on Sunday to punch a ticket to Omaha in the College World Series, taking on UC Santa Barbara. Danny Rosenbaum's single in the fourth inning gave the Cardinals a three to nothing lead. That would stay that way into the ninth inning. UC Santa Barbara with the bases loaded, facing elimination, and the pinch hitting freshman. Sam Cohen becomes a hero. Takes Zach Birdie's offering over the right field wall for the walk off grand slam, four to three. The Gauchos are headed to the College World Series for the first time in school history. A tough loss for Louisville. Kentucky and Josh Teeter had a 54 hole lead headed into the final round of the Rust Oleum Championship in Chicago. That's part of the web.com tour. But more impressive than the lead was his second shot on the par 4 12th on Saturday. Josh Teeter trip leads the field in greens and regulation 85% this week. Yeah, he does. Great iron game this week. This is an eight iron just chipping it from 142. Oh! Is it in? Well, that's a chip in. <laughs> what? <laughs> it flew in the hole. No way. Nothing but cup. That's as close as a slam dunk as you'll ever see on a golf course. And then the Danville native does the bow and arrow. Gotta love that, Josh Teeter. I do have sort of a sort of a sad update, I guess you could say. Teeter was tied for the lead. I mean, look at that shot, right? He was tied for the lead going to the 18th hole today in the final round. And he bogeyed the hole, so he finished in second. Oh, poor guy. Don't feel too bad for him. Still a good day for him. We'll be right back with a final look at weather. Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $293 million. Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $153 million. Got a lot of heat in the forecast next week. I mean, not as hot as those numbers, but I mean, <laughs> we're still talking about more heat to upper 80s after we get past tomorrow, right back into the thick of it with a daily chance of showers. Hope you'll join us right back here at 11 o'clock tonight.